All right. Um, well, once again, if you're just joining us, this is the Product Policy Institute's uh, webinar. Our new name and new new organizational website and folks. Um, from here on out, Product Policy Institute name. Uh, our stream, our way solutions begin. And we've called this webinar together today um, simply to um, our agenda this afternoon is jam-packed. We have an upstream Zika Bill Sheehan about where um, we're going with this, uh, or where we've been with the, the organization. Um, second, uh, we are going to uh, hear from Matt Prindeville a little bit about Sorry, folks. Um, as always, the more sophisticated the te technology, the more opportunities for it to uh, lead you astray. I will back up just a bit, um, but briefly, I just want to welcome you to the webinar. Again, I'm Mark Hayes. I'm the board president of Upstream. Um, we have a lot of news to share with you about our new name and website. Um, Bill Sheehan, our executive director, is going to share a little bit about the path that led us here. And, and then Matt Prindeville, our assistant director, is going to talk uh, more about um, the new name, how it reflects our values and mission, our new site, and how it can uh, really apply the work that Upstream does. And we're going to close um, with a few uh, closing remarks. And then uh, at the moment, we will have uh, official as a webinar, but if you all would like to stop on and ask any questions or share comments, that would be wonderful. We'll keep the line open. Um, and the way you can do that, uh, we'll walk you through that again at the end, but uh, simply by clicking the raise your hand icon is one way to raise a question or comment at the end. Um, we can unmute you and you can speak. Or uh, you can type a question or comment in the chat box. And we have one of our organizers, Chris Sparknick, who's joining us today, who will help us um, moderate some of those questions. And I'll alternate between the, the phone and the chat. So at this point, uh, Bill, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Mark. Can you hear me OK? Yes, we can. Excellent. I'm I'm Bill Sheehan. Uh, I'm executive director of Upstream. This is an exciting day for us, and I'm glad that all of you on the line are here to help us launch Upstream. I'm going to briefly describe where we've been and what we've accomplished in our first decade, and then Matt Prindeville is going to talk about why the name change and where we're headed. So the Product Policy Institute was founded in 2003 by myself and Helen Spiegelman. Um, I co-founded and led for eight years the Grassroots Recycling Network before that, which was instrumental in achieving the civic zero waste movement. And Helen and I felt that what was missing was attention upstream. When products and packaging are designed for the dump, no amount of recycling will get us to zero. So we started PPI. Now PPI has been about doing original research and putting ideas into action. Our first research report showed the dramatic rise whoops, here, showed the dramatic rise of products in the waste stream over the past century, shown by the red bars in this graph. Since municipalities took responsibility for manufacturing manufactured stuff, as Annie Leonard calls it, we argued that the lack of feedback to the makers of that stuff contributed to the rise of our throwaway society. Another path-breaking report was released in 2009. We extended a report by US EPA uh, used, which used consumption-based greenhouse gas accounting. PPI's report showed that the embodied energy from extraction, extracting, manufacturing, transporting, and using products and packaging accounted for a whopping 44% of the US total global greenhouse gas impacts. And that's more than heating and cooling of our buildings or local passenger transportation. So the difference between the blue bars and the red bars in this chart is what's called carbon outsourcing. PPI has also been about putting research into action. And since local governments are the parties holding the bag, so to speak, we organized local government product stewardship councils to work for state EPR laws. In 2004, when we were just getting going, the Northwest Product Stewardship Council was having success advancing EPR for electronic products. One of our board members, David Stitzel, and another early uh, 
colleague, Sago Jackson, had helped form that council and proposed that PPI start councils in other states. So that's what we did, starting in California and moving on to British Columbia, Texas, New York, and New England states. Sometimes we worked alongside of the Product Stewardship Institute in a uh, effective uh, manner. And in the end, we now have more than a dozen councils. So a key organizing tool of this work was getting local jurisdictions and associations next slide here to adopt uh, resolutions supporting extended producer responsibility, or EPR. Our work led to the adoption of more than 180 local government resolutions no, thank you. Uh, in six states, plus adoption of resolutions by national associations of mayors, counties, and cities. Now, as more EPR laws were passed, we started encountering opposition and realized we needed to broaden the base of our support for EPR. So in 2010, PPI co-founded the Cradle II Coalition a national alliance of more than 60 public interest organizations working to make products and packaging more sustainable. Cradle 2 is working to build the political power to have states adopt EPR policies for virtually all products and packaging in the waste stream. And Upstream coordinates and is the fiscal sponsor for Cradle 2. So perhaps the major contribution that PPI made during our first decade was bringing, oh, I said no, doesn't want to listen to me, um, was bringing the globally accepted term, extended producer responsibility, into prominence in the United States. When we started, there were only 15 laws in 11 states covering two product categories, beverage containers and mercury containing batteries. Today, there are 85 producer responsibility laws in 33 states covering 11 product categories, plus two framework EPR laws that create a process for bringing in more products over time. And producer responsibility legislation is moving beyond hazardous products to things like carpets, mattresses, and packaging that make up the majority of the waste stream. While many organizations are involved in different facets of this, this movement, I'm proud to think that PPI played a central role in establishing what is going on with this thing? Establishing and uh, advancing the vision of corporate accountability for product and packaging waste. And with that, I want to hand over the mic to Upstream's Associate Director, Matt Prindeville. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Just give me a minute here. I'm just switching over my screen. Well, let me just start by thanking all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to celebrate uh, this important milestone in the uh, in our organization as we move forward with a new name and a new brand uh, for the next 10 years. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we're going and also the process that we went through to come up with a new brand and what it means for us. So here's the old brand. It's served us very well. Take a good last look because uh, the only time that you'll be seeing this now is in historical documents. And here is our new brand that we're very excited about. And I, I would be remiss without uh, thanking a number of people that were involved in the creation of this. Actually, our, our, our new name and the tagline both came from board members of the organization. Um, David Stitzel, who's been with the organization since the very beginning, uh, came up with the name Upstream. And our co-founder, Helen Spiegelman, came up with the tagline where Way Solutions Begin. I also want to give thanks to uh, Marty Roman, a board member from, from Portland, Maine, and Don Erlinson from Minneapolis, Minnesota, who worked with us and, and David uh, through, countless, uh, through countless iterations of, of different brainstorm ideas 
as well as uh, refining to get to the name and the tagline that we came up with. I also want to thank Design Action out in San Francisco, California, that did all the design work for the name and also for our website. They did a bang up job, and we uh, highly recommend them. And then also would quickly like to thank uh, our communications consultant, Ruth Dalkey, who's done a tremendous amount of work uh, on the website for us as well as uh, helping us develop and implement our new communication strategy. So why change brands? Um, I think that the core reason that the board and the staff decided to change brands is that we feel that in order to build the necessary political power to bring uh, production and consumption issues into the mainstream, um, we need to be able to engage more of the American people. So we know that we have to be more inspirational and appealing. Uh, we wanted to have a more advocacy-oriented and less institute uh, feel to our organization. We also wanted to be more clear and de the name a little bit. Uh, over the years, when people have talked to us about Product Policy Institute, we've had questions, well, are you guys working on marketing policy or research and development or things like that? Uh, I think that by being very clear that we are focused on upstream solutions to environmental problems, uh, this new rebrand is going to help us uh, be more effective uh, in our work. And then finally, we wanted to broaden our scope and be clear that we're also about more than just product stewardship and extended producer responsibility. We're about upstream solutions uh, to our environmental problems. So here's what the, the name means to us. Uh, you know, we believe that the key to solving environmental problems is preventing them upstream before they start. And for us, that, that correlates to three different areas. Number one, we know that we need to design products with safe, sustainable materials and design them with the end uses in mind. So we need to design products uh, to be either reused or recycled into new products uh, or composted uh, at the end of their useful life. We also know that we need to develop and implement policies that assign responsibility to producers for creating sustainable products in the first place and then managing them when consumers are finished with them. And this has been the bread and butter of the organization that will, and will continue to be so uh, in the future. And then finally, we know that we need to engage people. Uh, first and foremost, to take action as civic-minded individuals, we need to create a whole new network of activists and, and also organize the activists that are out there to get more engaged and involved on sustainable production and consumption issues. And we also know that we need to engage people to promote norms of behavior that support sustainability. Um, we know that we need to, to get people to change on the civic side and also in their own lives as consumers, uh, the way that they think about purchasing and also the way that they manage uh, products and packaging in their own homes. Uh, here's what it means for our work. As I've mentioned, we've got a greater emphasis on engaging people, also a greater emphasis on campaigns. And I want to point out that, that we've traditionally focused on public policy campaigns. Uh, it's very difficult to pass legislation in this political climate in any state in the country, even the most progressive states. Um, we've had some good success. Even this last year, we've had a tremendous amount of success. And, and our Cradle II partners and local government allies uh, have been working together with the Product Stewardship Institute and in getting uh, a number of new laws passed. But we also feel that there need to be other indicators of success. Uh, and we are also uh, shifting emphasis to also work on market campaigns to engage the American people on these issues and put greater pressure on consumer goods companies uh, to take responsibility for their products and packaging. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I also mentioned, uh, I already mentioned that we're, we're looking to uh, do more than just, we thought it was more than just an EPR organization, uh, and, and the focus will, will always be on upstream solutions, and it will always also be on, on holding producers accountable for achieving environmental outcomes. And then finally, we're, we're implementing a broader communication strategy so that we can get our messages out, get these ideas out to more and more of the American people. Traditionally, we've done that through the networks that we've helped organize, but we also see a role in upstream uh, being able to get these messages out there to a wider audience, including getting more of these uh, stories about sustainable production and consumption into large earned media outlets. Um, we've been a resource for that over the years, but we are uh, having a, a renewed strategy, not just on the social media and the blog and all the other things that we've been working on, but also on, on generating more earned media on these issues to get them in front of the American people. These are the core constituencies that we serve. That we serve and our, traditionally, our focus has been on organizing public interest groups as well as local government officials and elected officials, uh, state legislators. 
Uh, we're also doing more work with leading companies that want to design product stewardship and extended produce responsibility into the way that they think about their products and also the way that they think about their products when consumers are done with them. And as I mentioned, we know that we need to engage more of the American people, and so we are shifting some energy and resources toward having upstream uh, both engage people through the, the networks that we serve, as well as individually as an organization. This is who we are today. Um, over the years, we've developed a, a, a sound reputation uh, and have helped counsel numbers of, of organizations and individuals through the networks that we work as thought leaders and policy experts on extended producer responsibility and product stewardship. Um, we've also worked as movement catalysts and coalition builders, both in building uh, the networks that, that we've already talked about uh, and also in bringing people together to figure out what are the kinds of campaigns, what are the kinds of strategies that we need to develop, and, and who are the right uh, people to involve in these campaigns as we move forward. These are the core pro projects of the organization today. Uh, we've already talked about the Cradle 2 Coalition and organizing local governments for product stewardship. And people also know about the historical research that we've done and will continue to do on sustainable production and consumption issues. Uh, the new campaign that we are rolling out this year is the Make It Take It Packaging Campaign. Um, over the last year and a half, uh, we spent a lot of effort in bringing the groups together that are working on packaging issues into a conversation to, to think about ways that we can engage the American people on packaging waste and all the issues that, that are related to it, uh, including pa plastic pollution, including greenhouse gas emissions associated with packaging, including all the resource conservation and all the wasted resources that go into landfills uh, and incinerators. And we'll be, we'll be co-launching this campaign uh, in the spring with our partners. And the main focus of the campaign will be on uh, pressuring consumer goods companies to take responsibility for redesigning their packaging with safe, sustainable materials, uh, and also uh, putting pressure on these companies to take responsibility for packaging waste when consumers are finished with it. Uh, we're very excited about it. We won't go into too many details because uh, we don't want to tip our hat too much. This will be rolling out in the spring of 2014, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody offline about it. I'm now just going to briefly walk folks through the website. Um, and if you'll bear with me while I transition over to the website, and I'll come back to the presentation in just a second here. So here is our new website. Um, Again, we really are excited about the design work that went into it, and are very uh, grateful to the folks at, at uh, Design Action for helping us pull together such an excellent website. Um, as you can see, we have a slider which goes through uh, the different featured content that we want to put on the home page. Um, I'm going to scroll down here and show you the rest of the home page, and then I'm just going to very quickly go across the menu bar so you, you folks can see uh, how we've organized our content here. Um, for folks that want to, that have never heard about Upstream or trying to figure out what's the, what, how product policy institute has changed, we can click right on the Who is Upstream bar and, and learn about these changes. Um, we've also featured blog posts uh, in, our, in our Take Action uh, uh, slider here in, in the rest of the page. And then finally, our, so, our links to our social media are all on the bottom of, of the, uh, the home page. Scroll back up to the top here. You can find everything you'd ever want to know about Upstream uh, on the About Us tab. You can learn more about our projects and resources related to our projects uh, on through our Projects tab. With the Issues pages, uh, we felt it was important to lay out all of the different issues that we're working on. And I'm going to just quickly go to one of these pages here. Again, we've got content here on the left hand side, you can learn about the different issues that we're working on. And then in the sidebar, we put specific resources that we want folks to check out related to the issues. We put uh, our blog posts that relate to the issues. And we also have news. We'll be, for those of you that have been following our, um, uh, our product policy listserv or on the product policy listserv and, and are, are used to getting all the different news from us, we'll also be cataloging uh, any important news that's relevant to the issues and solutions that we're working on in the different parts of our website as well. Uh, with solutions, you can go to the solutions that we're working on to, to the issues that we're working to address. 
Uh, and it's also set up the same way, content on the left, uh, resources, blog posts, and news on the sidebar to the right. This is something that we're really excited about. It's something we wanted to do for a long time. We have uh, files and files upon files of excellent resources in our, in our server. Um, and we haven't had a really good way to present those resources to the audiences through our old website. Um, in the new website, uh, we have cataloged resources by type. So if you want to look for a publication that we've developed, uh, or a presentation that we've recently given, or some testimony that we've recently given, uh, you can search right there. You can also search by topic. So if you're looking for uh, some, uh, for an issue that's related to climate change and waste, you can search on that. Uh, you can also cross-reference that with another topic if you'd like. So if you want to find anything that's related to climate change and waste and packaging, uh, this will give you all the resources related to that. We've just started to upload content to this. And we're also going to be posting content from other organizations as well. If you have uh, resources that you would like for us to share, we'd be happy to post those uh, on our website as well. Um, and we want this to be a resource of the whole community of organizations and individuals that are working on sustainable production and consumption issues. Under our Get Involved section, um, we're featuring a new and, and revamped Take Action page, which will mostly be focused on market campaigns over the next year that we'll be doing in conjunction with our Cradle Tree partners, as well as partners in the Make It Take It campaign. We've also revamped the way that folks can connect with the organization around the information that they'd like to receive from us. So you can sign up on our website, and you can choose if you're somebody that really wants to get into the weeds on these issues, and you can sign up for our roundup, where we're going to be sending news, technical articles, updates, uh, two to four times a week. Uh, if you're somebody that wants to get something on more on a weekly basis and connect to our blog, which is all original content, um, we'd be happy to uh, sign you up on, on the blog. If you're more interested in just hearing from us quarterly, you can sign up for our quarterly newsletter. And if also, if you want to take action on all the different actions that we've been pushing out for, uh, over, the, over the years, uh, you can sign up for our action network. Um, we're also very excited to have the blog integrated into the website. Um, over the last year, we really uh, ramped up the amount of, of, of blog posts that we're putting out there. Uh, we had over a dozen contributors over this last year, and we posted uh, uh, 40 blogs over the past year. We had 30,000 uh, plus page views on our blog. So we're very excited about having the blog integrated into the website. And folks will also be able to cross-reference things on our website from checking out our blog posts. And then, of course, you can get any information about uh, recent media as well as our logos. If you're an organization that we're working with and you've signed on to a, a, a sign-on letter, you want to find our logo uh, in an easy, so easy format, you can go right to the press room and get all that information. Um, so that's the website. And I'm going to quickly go back to the presentation uh, and then talk about how you folks can engage with us. Um, so if you haven't already, please. Uh, Connect with us through social media. Uh, we'd love to have you as Facebook friends. Uh, if you're into Twitter, um, we're tweeting every single day on this stuff. Um, you can also connect with us uh, on LinkedIn as well. Um, if you're interested in, sign in getting to that sign up page where you can figure out if you want to sign up for our blog or sign up for our action alert network uh, or just to stay informed, you can sign up there, which will take you to that page. If you'd like to take action, you can, you can go right to the Take Action slider uh, in the bottom of our homepage. And then, of course, if you'd like to make a donation to our organization as we head into uh, the next 10 years, uh, our Donate tab is right at the top. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Mark. And I'm hopeful that, uh, that Mark's uh, audio is going to work again. And if not, um, I'd be happy to moderate questions. Thanks so much, everybody. Well, thank you, Matt. Uh, that was uh, a wonderful presentation. The website looks tremendous, and uh, I know everyone on the board is um, very excited about uh, where Upstream is going. I want to thank you and Bill for all of your hard work in putting this together, both the presentation and, and the project itself. Um, so uh, we have just one minute left before we're officially done, but I, I just wanted to thank you all for, for coming today again. You know, as I think about how uh, my involvement in work around upstream solutions began. 
uh, one of my first gigs as an environmental organizer was in Maine where I began work on a computer take back campaign and uh, a colleague uh, gave us a tip about a cache of old uh, discarded computers in a shed uh, out on a farmhouse um, near a lake and as we did some investigative reporting to find out who it was and scoped out the scene you know that image of old discarded computers with chemicals leaching into the, the lakes to me was also appalling, but it contained the seeds of a real opportunity when I began seeing how people who are working on upstream solutions in advocacy space and the private space, sector space, were really had a vision for transforming um, how our economy and environment work together um, for better or for, or for worse, and we're trying to make it better. Um, so years later, that's what really inspired me to join um, the upstream board at the invitation of, of uh, Bill, Matt, and other board members. So it's really exciting to be a part of this. Um, you know, a new name uh, can seem like a small step, but I know that through this process, the board and staff and our, our friends and allies have really found a lot of clarity about the work we're doing, uh, which is tremendously powerful and it's also tremendously renewing. Um, so that's, that's uh, I think, the power embedded in that renewal really speaks to um, how important this change is and, and how important this new vehicle for our advocacy work will be to us. Um, so I really encourage folks, uh, if you haven't taken action with us before uh, or have and want to um, increase your engagement as a partner, as an ally, as a supporter, um, we can't do this without you. Uh, you are the folks who are going to help us move upstream's next 10 years of work forward. So we appreciate the time you've already put in and invite you to join us um, to take this next step forwards using this you know, tremendous new tool and new clarity of focus. Um, so those of you who'd like to stay on uh, for another 10 or 15 minutes, uh, at this point we will open up for any questions or comments. Again, um, this will be moderated by, by my colleagues. Um, there are two ways you can ask a question. One is to uh, click the raise your hand button, which should be on the um, webinar console. When you do that, um, uh, our colleague Chris will unclick it, and at some point we should be able to hear your voice and, and the rest of the audience should be able to hear it or you can type uh, a question into the chat um, box on your console. Chris will be moderating that and will feed me questions um, either individually or in groups if they tend to on certain themes. Um, so I will start by inviting any questions from um, our phone listeners, anyone who wants to speak uh, to us or to the audience um, as a question about our work and then alternate to the chat. So does anyone have a question or comment they'd like to share? Okay, I think folks are still chewing on that. I know that takes me a little while to formulate what I want to say. Um, I will, I'll, I'll uh, get the ball rolling. I actually have a question for uh, Matt about our program work. Matt, what's the, uh, if, if you have a sense of it, what's probably the next big opportunity for action in the new year um, for Upstream and its allies? Um, is it a particular piece of legislation or a particular uh, education effort that we're going to be embarking on. I'd, I'd like to hear a bit more and it would be great to share. Yeah, thanks Mark. Um, well, as folks know, we're heading into the legislative session for 2014 and we're just uh, canvassing our uh, two partners on the different types of legislation that, that folks are introducing. Um, we are excited about the opportunities to, to further work on extended use responsibility for packaging. Um, there will be bills introduced into Rhode Island, uh, Minnesota, possibly Delaware, um, and possibly California in the upcoming year on extended producer responsibility uh, for packaging. Um, our KOT partners are also engaged in, in working on a number of EPR bills for other types of products. Uh, as as uh, Bill mentioned, we continue to work on uh, products which contain hazardous materials, things like um, electronics and mercury containing products and, and others. Uh, but there has been this uh, new focus to also work on, on uh, products uh, and packaging which make up more and more of the waste stream, things like uh, carpet and um, uh, packaging, printed paper, and things of that regard. So uh, we're very excited about the upcoming legislative session. On the market campaign side with Make a Ticket, there's a number of, of big companies and, and products that we are, are targeting. I don't want to tip uh, our hat too much at this point because we haven't made any final decisions, but when we do roll out that campaign, 
uh, you folks can ex expect to, to, to see the, the idea of make it take it getting out there uh, widely through all the organizations we're working with. We're working with some big organizations that have uh, an extensive reach uh, in their action uh, capacity. So we're very excited about that. Um, there's also a, another issue that uh, we've recently started working on with our friends that are working on plastic pollution, and that's this issue of, of plastic microbeads uh, uh, making their way out of cosmetic products, getting washed down the drain, and getting into uh, lakes, rivers, uh, bypassing our uh, wastewater treatment facilities. So basically, wastewater treatment facilities don't screen them out. It's part of the reason why we found that, that uh, the plastic pollution in the Great Lakes is almost uh, as great, or in some places, greater than what you find in the Great Pacific Garbage Gyre. So um, we're very excited to be working with our, with our colleagues uh, around that as well, engaging the companies, putting uh, pressure. Uh, we'll begin to see some actions uh, targeting that particular issue in the upcoming year as well. Great. That, that's a good preview. I know we'll hear more from you all in the future, but um, sounds like a lot of good work to be doing. Um, I just want to point out some folks might have seen this in the sort of shared chat space, but we did have a couple questions about whether or not the materials um, for the webinar will be available after it. Um, the answer is yes, definitely. We, we have the webinar uh, it's being recorded, and we'll have a link uh, to the recording and to the presentation that we'll be able to share with folks um, who uh, maybe missed part of the presentation or weren't able to make it today uh, just as a backup. We'd be happy to share that with you. And of course, um, the, there's all the great new content. Muted. And, and Matt, just a clarification, clarification question. Uh, is the um, website currently live, or is there a, a hard launch date that, that uh, you can share with folks? The website uh, has been live since this morning, and uh, we're very happy to have folks come check it out. Um, we'll be sending a, a thank you email tomorrow to all the participants in the survey, and we really uh, would love it if you folks, uh, between now and tomorrow afternoon, would just Take some time to check out the website uh, and, and let us know what you think. We, we have a very simple survey, just a few questions, uh, so you can just get a handle on uh, what folks think about the new brand uh, and, and the new focus and, and the new website. So thanks very much. Great. Do folks uh, attending have any questions or Sago comments has or a reactions question. to the material? Sago okay. has a question, and then Robin has a question. I'll unmute Sago, and he can ask his question. Okay, great. Sago, uh, please speak up whenever you're right. What, ready. What's your question? Yeah, hi. This is Sago Jackson, Washington State. And uh, I just wanted, I already wrote this in the comments, but I think this is awesome. I think you're so on track, and it's very exciting. And I uh, just wanted to say that in person to uh, Bill, Matt, Mark, and the board members. And thank you for doing this webinar to roll it out to all of us. Uh, I, I think this is a, a new era for this work, and I'm very impressed. So thanks so much. Great, Sega. Thank you. That's that's music to our ears. Really appreciate that. The words of uh, words of congratulations. All right, I'll put it um, on to Chris, Robin. And who was the next next person? Robin. Okay, Robin. Speak up whenever you're ready. Robin. Robin. Oh, she just uh, Robin. she is now saying congratulations. This is a great development. Uh, she's in mute mode. Great. Let me try putting her out of mute <laughs> mode again. Okay. Robin? You may be able to hit the mute button on your computer. Oh, okay. She doesn't have a mic. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, she says, congratulations, this is a great development. And uh, that's Robin's comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, no, we I have one from Leslie. Leslie had a question, uh, let's see, how does upstream define EPR? Okay, that's a great question. Bill, would you like to take that one? Bill, are you still with us? Yeah, I was just on mute. Yep, sure. Um, yeah, and I see that, I think Leslie, oh, she's still there. Hey, Leslie. Um, yeah, we, we have um, a actually worked for, as, as I think you know, uh, the, with California Product Stewardship Council and the Product Stewardship Institute for over a year to come up with a agreed upon definition of uh, extended producer responsibility. And uh, we see it as a, as a subset of product stewardship. The product stewardship includes 
voluntary initiatives uh, and the extended producer responsibility is is legislative Muted. so it's it's mandatory and it tends to be more focused on the end of life stage although the intention of the policy is to affect design in the upstream stage and I guess in terms of how extended producer responsibility works it's basically assigning responsibility to the producers of products and packaging to figure out the solutions how to make sure it doesn't become a liability when consumers are done with it. So it's not telling them how many bins to have, but to uh, that they're responsible for ensuring that uh, it does not, uh, their stuff does not become a liability. So in broad strokes, that's it. Yeah, this is, this is not, I, I think the, the simplest way to explain it is that you know, this, this policy concept is really about Make, making producers responsible for mitigating and eliminating the environmental impacts of their products. And, you know, that's, we know that, that all of us downstream are, are dealing with the impacts and effects of, of an unsustainable production and consumption system. And we know that we need to push these problems back upstream so that they're solved at the design stage um, and that we've got enough effective infrastructure to collect and that we use or recycle all of our products and packaging into the stuff of tomorrow, uh, rather than those things. So that's really, the, in my mind, the simplest way of explaining it. Great. Thank you, too. And I'm sure there will be other good materials and resources on the website um, that kind of outlines where Upstream is thinking and how it relates to uh, its allies' work in this area as well. So um, another great reason for uh, the website revamp, a powerful new tool. Chris, do we have any other questions in the queue? None that I see. I think we're good. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I think with that, I just wanted to thank oh, here's you. Here's Leslie. All of you. Leslie has a question. <laughs> Many times producers don't really take responsibility, especially for design, but pass it on to consumers and maintain the status quo. How can upstream facilitate better design? To be continued, right? <laughs> Yeah, Sounds like it. Bill or Matt, do you want to respond to that quickly? Or? Sure, sure. I'd be happy to answer that. I, I think that, that you're absolutely right. right. Uh, the, the, downs, the, the decisions made at, at the design phase for products and packaging and the, and the, are, are, do not take into account the environmental impacts. So if they did, uh, you know, we wouldn't have all this widespread chemical pollution. We wouldn't have widespread uh, energy wasting and widespread resource wasting of all these valuable materials. And so, um, you know, again, part of the, the, the change in brand, extended produce responsibility is one important tool in the toolbox, but we also think that there are many other uh, upstream policies that need to be adopted to push these problems back upstream and get them solved before they, they impact all of us in the environment downstream. And those include things like products and, and packaging bans when there are safe, sustainable alternatives in place. Uh, those include things like efforts to, to work on source reduction and get uh, real achievable targets for producers to reduce the amount of materials that are in products and packaging. Um, you know, other places around the world have tried these policies. In some cases, they've been successful. In some cases, they've been big failures. But we need organizations like Upstream um, and like a lot of the, uh, of the organizations that we work with to be coming up with big ideas, to be advocating and organizing for big ideas, um, and to bring these big ideas to the American people so that they're putting the pressure on these companies to change their behavior. Because if, if we don't do that, if there aren't organizations like ours and the groups that we work with out there, then it's just many businesses usual. And um, you know, we know that, that in order to, to create that kind of political power, we have to make these issues mainstream issues. And that's a big shift in our, in our brand. You know, we think that, that upstream enables us to sell these policies more effectively, not only to our core constituencies, of, public interest groups, local governments, uh, state elected officials, and leading companies, and also now to the American people. So thanks for your question. It's a great question. Well, wonderful. That was, the, um, as Leslie, as uh, you have... Leslie, your comment suggested part of a lot. Um, I, I, I'd love to hear more. I think we're going to lose the uh, webinar space here momentarily, so I think I'll have to wrap things up, um, unfortunately. But Leslie, I'm sure if you can uh, follow Matt or Bill um, offline, I'm sure we'd be happy to talk more because it sounds like you've got some great thoughts to share. Um, 
So with that, I'll close it. Thank you again for taking the time. We really appreciate it. We look forward to more conversations, more interaction um, with you, our colleagues, allies, supporters. And um, I'm just very excited about where we're headed with this and, and want to thank everyone for all their hard work and putting it together and, and helping it make it reality. And, and we hope you'll help us spread the message um, even further. So with that, I think we'll end. Thank you all very much.